Hey everyone, Chris Horton with Oak Addicts and welcome to another episode of the Addiction Series. In today's episode we're going to talk about one of the most overlooked things when getting ready for a hunt, preparing your coolers. Like I said, one of the things that I've seen time and time again that people fail to do when getting ready for a hunt is preparing their coolers. When you're going to be in the backcountry for seven days at a time, you need to make sure that you still have ice on day seven if you put an animal on the ground. You're going to need to get that meat cooled. It's September. It's hot. The daytime temperatures are hitting 80 plus degrees in many places. And if you come back and you have no ice, there's a good chance that you're going to end up with spoiled meat. So what I'm going to talk about today is actually how I prepare my coolers for a hunt and then what I do to make that ice last longer. This time of year, garage temperatures are often an ambient temperature of around 80 degrees. And that means everything sitting in your garage is sitting about 80 degrees. That's the same for your coolers. And coolers are an insulator, so they can either keep cold things cold, or they can keep hot things hot. So when you take an 80 degree cooler or a 90 degree cooler, and you put all your drinks in there, they can be cooled down, and then you dump all your ice in there and you head to your hunting spot, there's a good chance by the time you get there that you're going to have lost a huge majority of your ice, no matter what brand of cooler you run. So it's three days before we leave and that's when I start my preparation. Um, I take the big freight coolers and the first thing I do is I actually go fill them with water just from my faucet. It's not super cold water, um, but it's cooler, right? And this is where I've actually gotten ready before I start this process. I save water bottles throughout the year, different jugs, water bottles, and I freeze them. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fill up these coolers with water about three quarters of the way and then I'm going to stick a whole bunch of those bottles in it and seal the cooler up and leave it. I typically leave it overnight the first night. I do it at night after I get home from work and uh, leave it sit till the next morning. After that I then go pull my next round of water bottles out. So I have about a dozen water bottles set up, frozen, and uh, I'll put six in. Leave it sit overnight, pull those six out. They're going to be completely defrosted the next morning, just water. And the water is going to be fairly cool. I'm then going to put my next set of water bottles in while sticking the set that I just melted back in the freezer. I'm going to repeat that for three days. By day three, that cooler is ice cold. You'll see your water bottles staying mostly frozen by the time you're about ready to go. At that point, I drain all the water out and uh, my cooler is pre-cooled. So now that you've got your cooler pre-cooled, you're ready to go, um, what can you do to help your ice last longer? Well, one of the big things you can do and that I do is I actually freeze about half of my drinks. So, of course, it's a pretty well-known fact that water freezes at 32 degrees, right? So, the coldest you can really get this water bottle, no matter how cold you have your freezer, is 32 degrees. But kind of an unknown fact is the fact that 
freezing Gatorade bottles is actually a lower temperature. So upon research on the internet, I saw some different answers depending on what type of Gatorade it is because your standard Gatorade has more salt, more sugar in it than say your low sugar or no sugar. But I run your standard Gatorade and the average answer that I got when it came to how cold Gatorade freezes at was 18 to 21 degrees. That means that this bottle is going to freeze almost 10 degrees colder than your standard ice. What does that mean? Well, in the past when I've had frozen Gatorade bottles in there, I have literally had the ice inside my cooler that has slightly melted refreeze and form a ball around the Gatorade bottles because of the fact that being in that 20 degree temperature range, it will refreeze ice. That means you can take your cooler and cause it to actually be regenerating ice. Now you're not going to regenerate a ton, right? Um, but it's certainly going to help and it all starts with how you prepare that cooler. The next thing that we do is at our elk camp, we actually set up a little dome tent in the shade by itself for just coolers. Why do we do that? Well, when you think about where trees are, the sun moves all day long, right? So at some point, your coolers basically are going to be out of the shade. So we use that tent, put it in as shaded a spot as possible, and then put the coolers inside of there because of the fact that while a tent will warm up, keeping the sun from beating on your cooler makes a huge difference. While the ambient temperature is there may be warmer, the actual energy from the sun hitting your cooler will keep everything colder. The next thing we do is we do a good job of making sure that we save one cooler basically for just ice, for just meat. So, by not opening that cooler at all, it holds its temperature and holds ice longer than say a food cooler that you're opening up one or two times a day or three times a day or if you drink cooler you're opening up a dozen times a day. Because every time you open that cooler what you're doing is introducing warm air. That as soon as you close that cooler, now the ambient temperature has to be dropped again so you're going to be losing ice. The next thing I want to talk about is the type of cooler that I actually use. Um, my philosophy is a little different on coolers than some people's. Some guys really like those giant 110, 120, 140 plus quart coolers. And I'm just not a fan of them. Um, I've tried them before. They work. They do their job. But they are such a pain to move around. That being said, also, if you have one giant cooler, that cooler has to be what you're putting everything in, right? Because you only got so much space in the pickup to get there. And um, I found that using 75 quart coolers and having three of them really does a lot better job for me. Um, another thing I really like about the using a 75 quart cooler is really I can dedicate one to just food. So that's one that's getting open, drinks, and then the others are just strictly ice or frozen water bottles uh, for day five, six, seven. And that means that I have ice longer than somebody with a bigger cooler. The other thing is that when you open a bigger cooler, you have more air that you have to try to cool back down. And you know, if you're talking about 80 degree, 90 degree day getting you know in and out of it, that can lead to a lot of ice lost. The other thing is the fact that 75 quart coolers are way easier to move around. Now, I bone out all the elk that we pack out. We kill elk typically in rugged, nasty, stupid areas. And we don't carry out the bone. So if you don't bone things out, then you may have to look at a larger cooler option because you're not going to be able to fit a bone in rear elk quarter into a 75 quart cooler. 
but beans the fact that we bone everything out 75 quart coolers work awesome for us we can load them by ourselves or with two people it's super easy they're easier to move around easier to keep the ice in it just works really well for us the cooler that I use myself is actually the Big Frig Coolers Badlands series. This is, like I said, their 75 quart cooler. And a few of the things I really like about it is the fact that A, it has really heavy duty construction. It's a heavy plastic, it works really well. Next thing I really like about it is actually their buckle system. The buckle system, it uses a rubber cam system that is super easy to latch but also easy to get undone. The next thing I really like also is their gasket system. Works really well and it seals it tight. That being said, when you've got cold air in there, it creates a vacuum because cold air is basically shrinking. The molecules are slowing down. So that vacuum can make it almost impossible to open up a cooler. Well, what Big Freak did is they actually put a relief valve on the side here. It's just a simple button on the side, pssst, and then suddenly you're easily open that lid. Another thing I really like is their handle system. Um, super simple. I like the fact that it, it is actually a fabric handle, so it moves, it, and if you want to take it off, it's simple to remove. You got some pre-built in bottle openers, so hey, after you get that elk on the ground, you want to enjoy a couple beers at camp with the buddies. Easy to open right there, but it also doubles as a locking point because of the fact that if you want to put cables through, if you're concerned about somebody walking off with your coolers out of the back of your truck, it's got this holes drilled on both sides, easily able to uh, put a cable lock through it so your coolers are there the next day. basically covers everything that uh, I want to talk about as far as getting your coolers ready for elk season. Opening day is almost here, so getting super excited and uh, going to finish getting these coolers ready. Hope everybody's enjoyed the addiction series so far. We're almost there. We're almost to opening day. So it's about time to hunt some elk. Thanks everybody for watching and good luck out there this season.